John Banks, welcome. Greetings. It's been about nine months since you won the mayoralty from Dick Hubbard, and of course you were mayor during 2001, 2004. What's it like second time round? Uh, more difficult, more time consuming, uh, more challenges, uh, more problems. Uh, uh, but apart from that, it's quite a privilege being back, but it's a big job and it's a very difficult job. Uh, and accommodating uh, the vested interests, uh, different communities, uh, ordering priorities, holding on to budgets, making sure that we stay with core business, uh, giving some gravitas to the mayoralty, uh, the whole myriad of issues is quite challenging. Of course your style of leadership is quite different from, from Dick Hubbard's. How would you describe your style? compared with his? Well, I, I don't know anything about Mr Hubbard's uh, style of leadership. Uh, mine is about consistent, decisive, unequivocal leadership, uh, clearly understanding the parameters in which I operate, motivated and driven by philosophy, concepts and principles, and having a clear, concise, definitive uh, vision and, pa and policies to get there. What in, fact, what in fact is your vision for Auckland? One Auckland, one city, one council, one district plan, one set of regulations, one chief executive, one mayor. One That's my super vision. city? One super city. Is that likely to happen? Uh, very likely, very likely. I've been around Auckland local government now for 33 years. I was first elected to the Birkenhead Borough Council, then the Birkenhead City Council, then the Auckland Regional Council. I was a minister on the front bench of two governments, minister of uh, local government, minister of civil defence, uh, six terms member of parliament. So I clearly understand the issues facing Auckland, the challenges and what needs to be done. There are some people though who would say a super city creates too much power in the hands of too few people. What would you say to those people? Well, I'm not interested in power, I'm interested in progress. And if you measure our progress, progress against Brisbane's progress, our sister city, Brisbane, uh, then on every single economic indicator, we're at least 30% behind. On growth per capita economic indicators, they are 70% ahead of us. We have sadly, sadly sunk very, very low against our trading partners and against international cities. Once upon a time when I first entered public office, we competed with Melbourne, with Sydney and with Brisbane. Today they outstrip us on every single economic indicator and they've become truly internationally competitive cities, whereas Auckland has, is now dragging the chain. We're living in very difficult times though, aren't we, economically and politically. Are Aucklanders getting a fair deal? Well, I think uh, the country uh, is reaping uh, what we've sown. Uh, this country for far too long has had uh, uh, no sense of purpose, no real direction, no consistent, decisive leadership, ad hoc policy. People have been far more interested in their real job, that is getting re-elected, than the pr process of democratic representation and economic progress. Now with economic progress comes social prosperity. Social prosperity never becomes before economic progress. And the parable first, of the gold though, coins, by the way, is the perfect indicator of that. Uh, the Lord Jesus uh, was a capitalist. He was a private enterpriser. He cared for the people because he believed we had to earn money before we could distribute the money to the poor by way of a helping hand. He was also an extremely compassionate person. Of course. And uh, we are living in times, aren't we, where, where people are struggling. Um, we look at the recent uh, demonstration by the truckies and we look at the recent protest uh, by the Asians. As a former Minister of Police in the National Government in the 90s, what's your view on crime against Asians? Well, my view on crime is that we've got crime today because we don't teach the difference between right and wrong. There is no good, there is no bad. People can't even spell evil. There is only 10 laws. In fact, uh, Jesus only had three laws for us, and you know those well. So we've got a, pl a pl 
plethora of laws, uh, 17,000 pages of laws. Uh, it's a lawless society because no one's interested. Every man and his dog for himself, and there are far too many two-legged dogs on the streets today. A gutless society that doesn't respond to bad behaviour and criminal behaviour and a country that is out of control when it comes to law and order. We're reaping what we've sown. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Your father went to prison when you were young. What impact did that have on you as a child? Well, the only thing I'd say about my childhood is that criminal behaviour is not hereditary. Uh, no one watching this program had a tougher upbringing than me. No one had any more deprivation than I did. No one watching this program knows what it's like to be out of home, out of school, out of work, out of luck. It doesn't make an excuse. I know the difference between right and wrong. I was taught that in Sunday school by the Salvation Army and therein lies the problem. To fix these problems we need more people back in Sunday school. It won't be fixed by the government. It won't be fixed by the police. It won't be fixed by tough jails. It'll be fixed by parents taking responsibility for their kids and teaching them the difference between right and wrong. So yes, my father spent a lifetime in jail. Yes, my mother spent a long time in jail. But it doesn't make me uh, a hereditary criminal. Of course not. In fact, you're a person who never quits, and you've had a variety of, of, of experiences. When we look at you as, uh, in your early life, a market researcher for a pharmaceutical company, you've run a restaurant, you've been a commercial property developer, you've been a talkback host, mm -hmm. and uh, you've also been, of course, an MP for the national government. All these things have gone to shape you, John Banks. What is your personal passion? What drives you? The only strong personal passion I really, really have deep in my heart and in my soul and every litre of blood in my body is my passion for my faith. Without faith, you have nothing. Faith is sine qua non. So faith is important to me. I'm strongly committed to my faith. It drives me, what motivates me. Uh, I'm blessed because I've worked very, very hard. I'm blessed because uh, I'm focused, I'm committed, and I work hard every day, every night, every morning. And uh, yes, life's been good to me, um, but this is a land of opportunity. This is the greatest country in the world. The only thing wrong with Aotearoa New Zealand are some of the people that live here. Uh, it is a great country. It is a post-Christian country. It is a country that is leaderless, rudderless, directionless, visionless and lawless, they're the problems facing this country. Uh, this nation needs inspired leadership. It needs unequivocal strength of character and judgment around standards and values and discipline and patriotism and commitment, and then we won't have any problems. Are you the man to give us that leadership? Well, at the moment, I'm busy being the mayor of Auckland City and uh, very pleased about that uh, and getting on and doing uh, my very best on that front. John Banks, thank you very much for joining us.